you ever see Spurs challenging for a title or winning a title? It's just not something we've ever been no. brought up with or seen. <laughs> we, 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 we did, I mean, under Pochettino in that season where they got champion. You know, yeah, but did you, league. Do you think they were going to win the league? No, but I think that's where they got sort of closest to winning major trophies. Um, no, I don't. And it's not maybe because of what Tottenham do. It's more because of what the others are doing. Yeah. And I don't think he's ever going to... You, you said he's got that sort of, if you like, reserve of cash. He's just never going to do mm. what even Arsenal have done, to be honest with you. In the last few years, the Cronky family have just... Well, why not? I just don't think he's got it in him. It's not his nature. It's not what he does. I think... Foster Coglu? No, Daniel Levy, spending the money to get to a level whereby they can compete with Arsenal, with City, with United, with Chelsea. I just don't... These clubs are monsters when it comes to cash and putting money into it. I think there is a crunch point now, though, because we've had everything in terms of, you know, we had a 36,000-seater stadium, then we've got to build the stadium, Wembley, Covid... Everything now, you know, the figures for this year, the figures are going to come out in the next, in the next couple of weeks, and it's going to show a lot of positives in terms of the numbers. So why, why there was always an Tottenham excuse do before. what Liverpool and Arsenal have done? I, I, I personally agree. Uh, and I think Levy's, ex, ex, I say excuse, but his reason has always been, look, this financial stuff is coming down the, down the pipeline. We've had the, the stadium overspent. We've had COVID. Now we're just building up to a stage. Yeah. He's, it, there's not going to be any more excuses now. There's but not going to be any more excuses. They'll still have to basically take his wallet out of his pocket and spend it. And just from, a, just from a point of view of how he's operated for all those years, except obviously there may be more revenue now in the stadium, but, you know, Liverpool have... The, the, will he go and do an Alisson and an a, a Van Dijk? Will he go and spend 160, 170, 180 million on two players mm. to change the whole dynamic of the club? If you think about what Arsenal have done with 100 million on Declan Rice, will he go and do that? Has he got it in him to do that? <sighs> I don't know. I really, I really want to think that it, it could be because, you know, there are lots of bad football club owners in this, in this country. And he, despite the stick, and, you know, he manages to shoot himself in the foot at least once, you know, 6% season ticket rises the other week after we've just had a great result against Villa. You know, any good feeling he gets, he always seems to knock it back. But there is, there is a chance for them to do that now. Before, I think a lot of us have accepted. But will he do it? No, but I always think there has been a I, th I think I think I think if he doesn't if he doesn't do it now then he never will, but cultural, this is the last Culturally year. to cha to shift the balance. You talked about Liverpool and what Arsenal have done to shift that mentality. They've had a, they've had to go and do something big. They, Liverpool did two big, massive, huge yeah, but that deals. Come, my point being, that that come from money of Coutinho. So it's mm. Liverpool have never sort of just but he still had to go and spend it. Yeah, of course they've got to go and spend and it, and that's what Tottenham are going to do. And this is, as he's saying, this is the first time it feels like they are actually in a position where they've got a stadium, they're bringing money in. They, what, what, how, how can Arsenal be financially stronger than mm. Spurs now when you've got this stadium? I know maybe being in the Champions League for a few years, I get that. But in terms of really breaking the bank and trying to make that next step, I think Spurs but, have got to do that. I, I think you're right. I'm not sure. Part of the, the bit that feels me that he, he probably won't go and do that is because there has been a shift in terms of recruitment. Uh, in the last year in terms of a lot more data-led. Their club have been quite kind of proactive in making sure that fans know that this is data-led and the type of signings like Udogi and Saar. And yeah, but that's what everyone does, but, isn't it? I, yeah, I, but that's what I think, you know, they've, they've gone down this, this route, particularly with the new director, football director as well. I just, I'm not sure whether he would go and pull those big monies out, out but of the But I, 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 I said a few years ago, and it was criticised at the time, that I think he's the best operator in football, because actually, if you look at what he's done off the pitch, there is no one... I think, apart from Manchester City with their endless cash that they have, has developed their stadium training ground in the way in which Tottenham have. No one. It's unbelievable what, what he's done. The problem is he's never really got it right on the football side. He's always wanted to keep a sort of tight rein on that side of it. If he just let the sort of... If he let that go, which he probably won't, because he's demonstrated he won't, and he allowed to sort of, if you like, take the shackles off a little bit, there could be a chance that you could challenge Lee, but I'm not sure he will ever do that. Well, he has things. You actually look with Ar where Arsenal and Tottenham, before Arteta came in, where basically Tottenham finished above Arsenal for about five or six years in a row, like something like that. Yeah. So, and this, I think the job Arteta's done is, is brilliant. He got them to a certain level, and then what you're talking about, Liverpool. Liverpool did the same, and then they had to go Van Dijk, Allison. So he then he's had to go sort of Declan Rice. He's this, he spent big money on Havertz. Whether that takes you to a title, we'll see. But he, he had to get them to a certain level, and that's where Postecoglou is probably trying to do now. And then it is up to basically Daniel Levy in the next eighteen months to go and buy that. Player. Yeah, but that he needs to punch that now. But, he, he to, but we, to... we've seen it before. You know, Conte he finished fourth. You know. They, they bottle finishing fourth and we nick it at, at the end. And then you're thinking, well, Champions League, a manager like Conte, now. 
Now's the time to, to go. And they did to an extent. And it's not that we haven't spent money. We have spent money. I mean, we spent about 65 million on about four years ago, the fan of it in midfield. And Dombele. Yeah, I mean, well. Mm. That's, no, but what I'm saying yeah. is that. And that's, and that's his defence. That's his defence, that, that they do go and spend the money. And OK, you know, it, it's not worked out. But I think he's, like I said, the, the, from the fans' perspective, for the people that are you know, against Levy, and I think everywhere falls somewhere in between, is that these moments are where you've then got to go and push. And he's had these excuses or, or genuine reasons for all the way up until now. But now there's a time where you have to, if, if you're serious about it, then you're going to have to go and, go and do it. And this will, mm. this will be the, the test.